going to invite you to grab a hymn book and turn to hymn number 255 and stand with us and we'll sing together. Hymn 255. service tonight with a word of prayer. Brother Earl, will you pray for us, please? seated tonight as we listen to our choir.
our choir comes down, why don't you stand with us and let's shake hands and greet each other tonight. you again tonight to Tri-State Baptist Temple and we're excited about this evening. We're looking forward to the preaching of God's Word in just a little while. We're looking forward to the time after the service where we're going to celebrate uh, with Miss Barbara as she has uh, uh, retired from our daycare, been here for so long and done such a great work and uh, so we're thankful for that and uh, we're excited uh, to be able to celebrate tonight but we're thankful for a great day. And uh, looking forward to uh, everyone uh, being able to enjoy all these things. Don't forget about our ladies Bible study tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. We want to invite all of our ladies that are here today uh, to come and, and be a part of the ladies Bible study. They have been studying through a, a book and reading about the lives of some uh, missionary, missionary uh, wives and uh, some of the things that God has done in their life. And they've been using a book. Uh, if you don't know that, have that book or haven't been reading it, uh, that's okay. You can still come and you'll still be able to learn and, and grow. They're taking those things and, and uh, then looking at the truths from God's Word. Uh, if, you are, if you do have that book but you don't remember exactly where you need to be for this month, uh, just make sure you ask Miss Angie and she'll help you know where, uh, what you're going to be looking at tomorrow. Uh, but we're looking forward to that. We want to encourage you to come and, and bring, bring somebody with you and uh, have a good time with the ladies' Bible study. Our joy group, the Just Over Youth group, has an activity on Tuesday. Uh, so if you're part of our joy group, um, meet at the church at 9 o'clock and uh, going to Cracker Barrel. So that would be a good meal and uh, have some, something good to eat and enjoy some time together. So don't forget about that as well. And uh, we are uh, looking forward to that. Uh, the children are going to go practice in just a little bit, be working on their Easter program. So you keep praying for uh, what they're doing. And as they prepare and uh, pray for the families, their families, that we can bring, have them be here and, and be able to hear the message uh, of the gospel through their program on Easter. And then uh, also our adult choir has been working on music as well. And uh, they'll have a special uh, program on Easter Sunday. So we're excited about these things and looking forward to seeing the Lord. Lord work, but you pray for them that uh, we'll do our best to give God his honor and glory, and that what we do will point people to Jesus Christ. So we're thankful for that, looking forward to all these days. But uh, you just keep being in prayer about all these things we have going on, and we're thankful for all the good things the Lord allows us to be a part of. But this time, we will ask our men to come. We will take up our tithe offering and faith promise missions offering here this evening. Amen. Let's pray again together this evening. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just again thank you for another great opportunity in your house this evening, Lord. We just pray that uh, uh, your special blessing upon this evening's service, Lord. We pray that you be with our pastor as he prepares to uh, preach that you've laid upon his heart, Lord. We just pray that uh, you bless us all tonight. May he be all the honor and glory. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. that song the orchestra playing that's a good one and uh, we're glad you're here tonight thank you for coming out and being here on Sunday evening and it is a special Sunday evening uh, we've had two great Sunday evenings in a row we had a great baptismal service last Sunday night where we had one of our young couples follow the Lord and believers baptism a good group of folks out for that and now tonight after our services we're going to be honoring Miss Barbara and her faithfulness here uh, and investing her life in the lives of so many children and families in our community and I was just thinking about that you know uh, we of course Miss Barbara worked there for 29 years and and uh, Nikki her granddaughter has worked there for several years and now Bailey's kind of working her way through college there working a few hours a week at the daycare and that's a great grandchild so we you've got quite a heritage there and uh, so we're thankful for uh, for the swan influence on our daycare ministry and uh, for the time invested there and uh, it's just a blessing and we're going to honor her after the service and uh, we'll have some fellowship and uh, the ministry center looks nice and decorated they've got some posters up and a card table looks like there and some things on that some good food so we just want to spend that time together and rejoice you know she's made a choice to spend all that time in ministry life but There'll be a reward for that someday, and so she's, she's invested it wisely, and we want to honor that, the decision she made to serve the Lord. And uh, we're honored and thankful you're here tonight. God bless you for coming out and being here. Uh, one of the great ministry uh, things that we have on our calendar every year is our church camp, our summer camp, and our church people know uh, about that. We, uh, we go away to camp the first week of June, and uh, we, we don't go far away, but far enough to get away. And uh, we take uh, children who have uh, completed the first grade. So they'll be going into the second grade all the way up through the 12th grade. And every year it seems like it winds up being somewhere between 80 and 100 of them. And we go for the whole week. We leave on Monday and don't come back till Friday. And uh, we feed them uh, three great meals a day and a snack at night. And uh, we just uh, have Bible teaching and and devotions and sharing God's word all throughout the week and just an opportunity to invest in children's lives and uh, no greater resource do we have than young people and so it's a tremendous opportunity for us as a church it's one of the most costly ministries we have all through the year but uh, we need your help with that and on Sunday nights we take up a special offering just for, ch for church camp and uh, we call it our change offering and so we just ask folks maybe to see if you have any change in your pocket or in the bottom of your handbag, you ladies, and get it out and, and get it ready. And we put that in our big bank over here, and then we empty that two or three times a year and use that for church camp. Uh, we'll take some offerings up, uh, offerings in church services for camp, closer to camp. And so we hope you're praying and planning just to give something special for church camp when the time comes. But you can help us by giving these change offerings. And what makes it special is we use all the elementary and preschool age children that are in our church services on Sunday night. And so it's important you moms and dads bring your children out and uh, have them here for church on Sunday evening. And so we got several that are here tonight. We want you to come on over here, boys and girls, and help us take up our offering. And uh, we need your help with that tonight. Come right on over here and get your... A cup and then we're going to pray together and thank the Lord for the offering and uh, you can help us out with that tonight all right a lot of these boys and girls will go to camp and some of them maybe will go for the very first time this year and uh, it'll be exciting for them to, to go and to be there all right all right everybody got a cup yep. all right let's pray Lord we thank you for being good to us tonight we thank you for our church camp and Lord we just want to 
We just want God to, uh, to, to remind ourselves tonight that we realize that all the good things we have come from you, and we ought to be thankful for them. And uh, Lord, we want to be thankful for these boys and girls. And so we ask you to bless them. We're praying every one of them will come to know you as their Lord and Savior, know what a joy it is to live for you and to serve you. And so bless and meet the needs in the offering tonight, we pray. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have some offering, just hold your hand up there, okay? Hold your hand up and they'll come by and they'll pick that up. <clears throat> Right. Thank you, boys and girls. You helped out and did a great job, and, and I'm thankful that you were here, <coughs> here tonight and able to help with that offering. And we're thankful and glad that you're here tonight as well, and uh, we are looking forward to fellowship in a little bit. I know they've got some food and some refreshments, and we want everyone to come over and be sure to share in that time uh, after the service this evening, and we're glad you're here. Uh, this morning, we made some material available for our church family throughout the Easter season and it's not too early to start talking about Easter <clears throat> this year it's actually a little late uh, later than last year isn't it uh, last year uh, we had a March Easter I believe this year it's an April Easter but that's not too early to start thinking about it and so we we put some material at both of our exits on the tables one of them is a little card it says celebrate the resurrection at Tri-State Baptist Temple and it's just an invitation you can give to someone you work with, maybe a neighbor or a family member or a friend, and it lets them know a little bit about what Easter is like. If they attend it here at Tri-State Baptist Temple on Easter Sunday, it uh, tells them a little bit about what to expect on the back and shares some great uh, truths about why Jesus Christ and, the, and, and Easter matters and that uh, gives us our service times and things. So I hope you'll take those cards and use them throughout this season invite people to Sunday school and church and also to our Easter services and then there's a flyer back there that looks like this one and it has <clears throat> a lot more information about Easter Sunday services the times that uh, Sunday school begins and nursery and all these kind of things so I hope you'll just take them throughout the year here the Easter season and we'll keep them back there for you and you can use them and uh, begin now to plan and pray and invite and, and work toward and having folks here with you on uh, the day we celebrate the resurrection, and uh, that's Easter Sunday. But uh, we are thankful. Thank you for coming out and being here. Hope our joy folks will turn out well on, on Tuesday morning. And uh, maybe if you've never participated in our joy ministries, uh, this will be the time you begin. This will be our first one for the year. And our joy group is a group of our folks in church who have finally grown up enough to get a discount on their coffee at McDonald's and so they're in that group 
And if you're not able to do that yet, it just gives you something to look forward to when you grow up, right? <clears throat> and uh, that's what we were told all the time we were teenagers. Give you something to look forward to when you grow up. Then when you grow up, you still have to look forward to being able to do that. And uh, so uh, if you can, I hope you will. And we have a great time together. And, and uh, we'll leave here about 9 o'clock. We're going to go up to Cracker Barrel and have breakfast and fellowship together and just spend some time together. And uh, we hope you'll be able to come with us. Well, for a little while tonight, we'd like for you to take your Bible and turn to the Old Testament, uh, to the heart of the Bible, and that's into the book of Psalms. Psalms is right in the heart of the Bible. And uh, if you had a Bible without all those many pages of notes and all those things in it, and it was just Genesis to Revelation, and you just stuck your finger in the middle and opened it up about halfway through, you'd probably hit the book of Psalms. It's right in the heart of God's Word. <clears throat> the book of Psalms deals with the heart of men. God's work is done in the hearts of men. This is where God does His work. And uh, we're looking at the book of Psalms. And uh, we began to preach this year a, a series of messages on stewardship, the stewardship of life itself. And we found out that the real Christian life is a life of faithful stewardship to God. Uh, God has given us everything we are and have. And the true Christian life is when we allow him to lead and guide us and, uh, and to show us how he would have us invest all we are and have uh, back into the work of God according to his will in accordance with his word, the stewardship of our life itself. Stewardship's not just about money and material things, but it's about everything that has to do with our life. And so we've been looking at that thought. And this, tonight I want you to think though uh, with me specifically about our time uh, the stewardship of our time and in Psalm 90 we have a psalm we believe Moses was the penman of this psalm and uh, uh, we find uh, here and we'll look at most of these verses but let's just begin by looking together and I'll read and you follow along we'll read down through verse number 12 of Psalm 90 and let's think about the stewardship of our time the Bible says in Psalm 90, verse 1, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. And in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath we spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet, it is their, yet, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, or even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. This is what Moses is telling us here. And when we think about that, we think about our time and stewarding our time. And that's what I want you to think about with me for a moment tonight. <clears throat> Let's just look to the Lord and have a word of prayer. Father, again, we thank you. We're able to come and be here <clears throat> this evening. Uh, we do thank you, Father, for the faithfulness of Miss Barbara and her ministry here at our church and working with children throughout this community through nearly three decades of faithfulness and service. Lord, being able to influence and touch the lives of many children and having the opportunity to minister to the hearts of many families and point them uh, toward a real relationship with Jesus Christ, toward our local church. Thank you for those years. And God, we know they weren't spent up. They weren't just thrown away. They were invested in an eternal work and Lord we thank you that you you have a reward for that laid up in store for her the Lord help us to show her Lord honor now and give her Lord the honor she's due and so Lord tonight may she be blessed and Lord we thank you for her may her life and faithfulness be 
a testimony to others. Lord, we just ask now as we open our Bibles, you'll open our hearts and word, our, our lives to your word. And Lord, may we, uh, may we be obedient, God, as you speak to us. And Lord, may we allow you to address the needs of our life and may we respond to you in those areas. Someone maybe has come to church tonight, but never in their life have they truly came to you, Lord Jesus, for salvation. Lord, they may have grown up in church or, uh, Lord, they may deem themselves sincere and, and religious and, Lord, desiring to uh, live a good, clean life. But, Lord, they've never been born again by grace through faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, you'd do that enlightening work. You'd do that work of sowing gospel truth into their hearts. And, Lord, maybe tonight, if it pleased you, you'd bring forth that fruit of salvation in their life. Lord, each of us tonight... God, you want to speak to us, and God, uh, all of us need to draw nearer to you tonight. And so, Lord, we pray you'd speak to us about our stewardship, the stewardship of the life you've given us and all that it encompasses. And, Lord, may we, may we be faithful stewards, uh, God, and may we look to you, and, God, may we make the most of what you've given us, and, God, make the most of the opportunities of life. So uh, we just uh, give this time to you now tonight. Lord, do something eternal in our lives. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And amen. <clears throat> and amen. I was thinking this week when I was reading this and thinking about this message of a, a book that I have in my library. It's called The Memoirs of Robert Murray McShane. Robert Murray McShane. If you've never read his memoirs, I'd encourage you to get it and read it. Robert Murray McShane was a man whose light for Jesus Christ was very bright. Shown very bright if if but just for a short time. Robert Murray never saw his 30th birthday. He never saw his 30th birthday. He was a Scottish preacher who died before he was 30. And although his life was short comparatively, he redeemed the time that God gave him in a tremendous way. At his death, he, he, had, he had estimated that he had read the Bible through more than 100 times. That's incredible, isn't it? At not even 30 years of age. But he'd spent time in the Word of God. One day while he was speaking to a disheartened and discouraged minister, a man much older than he, he said to the man, he said to him, Go on, dear brother. Only an inch of time remains. And then eternal ages roll on forever. Only an inch in which we can stand and preach the way of salvation to a perishing world. This is the way Robert Murray McShane viewed his life, that his entire life was just but a moment of time. And he had to do all he could at that moment because he knew that eternity was coming. McShane's memoirs are a book that you should read. He was a man who was a faithful steward of his time. And what we do with our time is what we're doing with our lives. What we're doing with our time is what we're doing with our lives. Time is a gift God has given us. And what we do with the gift of time, it's been said, is, is and can be our gift to God. What we do with the gift of time, our time, can be a gift that we give back to God if we invest it and give that time to Him. Psalm 90 is the Psalm of Moses. It was written sometime as the children of God were wandering in what seemed like an endless day of wilderness. Forty years wandering in the wilderness. Verse number 12, Moses makes the statement here, So teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, after that you have lived and died and entered eternity. Will it have mattered that you had a measure of time in this world? Will it have mattered? Will you have made a difference in the lives of others with your life and the time that God has given you? These are questions that every child of God, we ought to, we ought to make those a priority in our life. How I'm spending my time, investing my time, is it making a difference? Uh, is it going to matter someday when I enter eternity? Paul was nearing the end of his earthly ministry. His time in this world was nearly up. He wrote to Timothy, the young pastor, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. He said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This ought to be what each and every one of us as the people of God, that we're ready moment by moment, day by day, with that statement, that it be true of us. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready. I've, the course you've given me, the opportunity that you've given me, I've made the most of them as I know that I could. This was, this was true of Paul. In Acts chapter 20, Paul, Paul has his farewell with the elders from the church at Ephesus. This is the church, this is the church that was Paul's favorite church. When you read the, uh, when you read the New Testament, uh, he had his favorites. They were, they were so kind to Paul. He spent three years there more than he did any other church. He loved them. He loved them all, but he loved them, and they were special to him. And, and when Paul told them he was leaving and never going to see them again, those Ephesian elders, the Bible said, they fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept together sorely because they knew they would see his face no more. Acts chapter 20, he says in verse 25, And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. Say, Pastor, how could Paul say, I have fought a good course, I finished my course, kept the faith. How could he say that? Because of what he reminded the elders in Ephesus. I cease not night and day trying to warn people of the coming uh, of Jesus Christ and of the need to be saved. He invested his time and life in a way that made a difference. See, death is an appointment that each of us has waiting for us. We know that it's out there. We know we're facing death someday and our life in this world will, will be over. This life will be over. And you know, right now, knowing that, we need to be prepared for that day, don't we? We must be prepared for the day of death. And preparation for the day of death, uh, this is something that comes in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ alone is, is our preparation. We must put on the Lord Jesus by faith in His death, burial, and resurrection that He was the Savior. He is the Savior. Uh, salvation today and preparation for our soul is not in a plan it's not in a program. It's a person. Jesus Christ is the Savior. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. He didn't give a, uh, a, a program or a plan. He didn't give uh, some uh, course that we need to go through or some ritual that we need to do. He gave a, His Son, a living Savior, who died for our sin, paid our debt, was buried, but rose again and lives today. He is salvation. And we must be prepared by knowing and having Him as our Savior. Salvation tonight, listen, I'm the first person to preach you ought to be faithful to church, but salvation is not being in a church. Salvation is not in being baptized. And all, though we believe we ought, ought to be scripturally baptized, the born-again believer, we taught, we preached about that last Sunday night. It's not in baptism. Salvation is not in confirmation or taking communion. It's by faith receiving and resting our soul in the gospel of a, the finished work of Jesus Christ. His death for my death. His life for my life. Uh, his righteousness for my unrighteousness. Uh, his resurrection means life for me. From death I have life in Him. And we must be prepared for death. But once we know Christ is our Savior, we can no longer focus on death anymore. Now it has to be about life. Because we have such a narrow window of life. Such a short thing. M Moses said it's like a tale that's told. A tale. Someone tells the tale and then it's over. The telling of the tale is over. This is our life. Psalm 90, God speaks to His people about the stewardship of their time. What we do with our time is ultimately what we'll, we, we will have done with our lives. And many people have it in their minds that someday they're going to take care of the truly important things in life. Someday they're going to take care of the vital things. They're going to straighten this out and get this straightened out and get back where they need to be here and do this, that, and the other. But you know what happens more than, more than not is that they wait until it is too late and then time has slipped away. We have the opportunity to invest our lives and times into that which is eternal. And we must choose to steward our time faithfully. The stewardship of our time. Let me just give you these three things. Number one, 
Think about God's place in your life. God's place in your life. In Psalm 90, <clears throat> Moses says, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever Thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. He says, Lord, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place. Don't forget, when Moses penned down these words, the children of Israel had yet to enter into the promised land. They were just wandering. They were wandering in the, in the desert until an entire generation would fall in that desert because of disobedience, because of a lack of faith and, and obedience to God and His Word. But Israel, the people of God, they had no permanent home in the world at that time. They were just moving along, moving along. And Modus declared that God Himself was their dwelling place. They were living in Him, living by Him. And this is the place that God deserves in all of our hearts and homes. He deserves to be our dwelling place. We need to live in Him and as He lives in us. Uh, he said, from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. God is an eternal God. We, we are in time right now. We're in time, but God is eternal. And God has given us a measure of time. And what we do with it can impact eternity. Isn't that amazing? God's everlasting. He had no beginning. He has no end. I'm headed for an eternity, a, a, an, infinite, an infinite measure of time, a, a, a measure that is unmeasurable, a time with no end. And yet right now, in the measured moment of time I have, I can impact eternity. I can make a difference in that limitless, timeless place. God has given us time, a measure of it. He said in verse 3, Thou turnest men to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Men, men, because of sin, we're returning back to the dust of the earth. Uh, our bodies are going back to the dust and our eternal souls will leave this world and we'll, we'll head out into eternity. But someday I'll be resurrected. Someday I'll be resurrected to stand with the Lord. Uh, verse number 4 says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. You know, with God, the Bible said a thousand years is just the same to Him as our yesterday was. We are to be on watch during our time in this world, watching to make our time matter, watching so that we invest it in that which is eternal because it will come and go too quickly. True life is in God, Jesus Christ my Savior, our Lord, life is in Him. It's in Him that I find true life and life. Acts 17, Paul Paul was preaching and said in verse 28, For in Him, in the Lord, we live, we move, and we have our beings. Truly, God is our dwelling place. It's in Him that we live, move, and have our being. And God, God's place in our lives is that we must realize and recognize that it is in Him that we truly have life, that we live, that we have being, that we have an eternity, that we have hope. So God has a place in your life. Notice number two and write down God has a purpose for us. When you read beginning in verse 5 of Psalm 90 down through verse number 11, God says to His people that, that our lives ultimately are measured in days, not in weeks, months, or years. <clears throat> so finite is life that God, God breaks it down here not to years or not, to, not ultimately to months, but unto days. Unto days, teach us to number our days. We know that each day is important. Every day we have is important. For a child of God, there ought not to be a day go by that we, don't, that we don't in the Lord look to Him for our life and being, that we don't recognize Him as life and the being and meaning of life. And uh, every day, every day, there ought not be a day go by we don't spend time hearing Him and looking to Him and learning about Him from His Word, communicating with Him in prayer. Uh, ought not be a day go by that, that we're not seeking to reach some lost soul 
uh, living, living that day to fulfill God's purpose for our life and glorify Him. Not a day goes by that these things should not be true. Verse number 8, there in Psalm 90, Thou hast set our iniquities before Thee, our secret sins in the light of Thy countenance. And I thought about that verse. You know, there's no light as bright as God's light. No light as bright as God's light. It sobers me to know that all my secret sins have been seen by God. There's not a one that, that <laughs> oh, someone else in this world may not know about it, but God knows about it. They've all been set before him one by one. He knows them all. Oh, but the, the great thought is his love is beyond comprehension. His grace is limitless. His mercy is everlasting, isn't it? What a great Savior we have. Verse 9, our lives are telling a story. Our lives are telling a story. What story is your life telling others about God, about His importance and place in your life? What is your life telling others? What, what has my life said to others? What story has your life shared with others? Verse 12, he said, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, we have not one day to waste not one day to waste on the petty things of the flesh. Not one day. That, it's, it seems so great to us, doesn't it, now? The things that, that put us in the flesh, that get us in the flesh, that consume our flesh, they seem so great. Do you know a million years from now, they're not going to matter at all, are they? And life is too short to waste on the petty things of the flesh. It's too short uh, to, 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 to live a day in self-pity over the sorrows of the past because they're, they're going to mean nothing in eternity. We must live today. God gave us this day to live. We must number it as a day we have of life and opportunity to live and invest that time in the things of God. We must steward that day each day wisely for eternity. We need God's wisdom as we number and invest our days. True wisdom, the wisdom of God is in Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3, speaking about Him, the Bible said, In Him, in whom, in the Lord, uh, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All of God's wisdom is in His Son, Jesus Christ. He's the living Word. Proverbs 4, 7 said, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy gettings, get understanding. Proverbs 9, 10 said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Without God's wisdom, the wisdom that is found only in Christ, in His Word, we'll waste the time of our lives. We'll spend it. We'll throw it away. We'll waste it. We'll allow it to slip through our hands. It will not have mattered. We need the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. He gives us discernment about being led by His Spirit, about seeking and being obedient to His will, and about applying His Word to our lives so the choices and decisions we make in life, they're not, only, they're not only good for us, they're pleasing unto God. We need that wisdom. We need it each and every day. Psalm chapter 35, the psalmist says in verse 15, My times are in thy hand. And this is the way we ought to live every day. God, this day is your day. You gave me this day. You've given me this time. God, I want wisdom about how to invest this day and spend this day. I want a wisdom, Lord, so that it tells the right story, that it lays up the right reward in heaven, that it is not wasted. Uh, God, give me wisdom about this day. And our times are in the Lord's hands. So God, God has a place in our life. He has the supreme place. God has a purpose for us and our time. And then number three, uh, simply write down, God wants to hear us in prayer. <clears throat> in verse number 13, the remaining part of Psalm 90 is Moses in prayer. Moses turns to God in prayer. And he said, Return, O Lord, how long? Let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and Thy glory unto their children, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, 
The work of our hands established thou. So Moses concludes this chapter with prayer. Moses thinks about the repentance, the sin of the people of God. He's thinking about that. God, God, may there be a repentant heart in your people. May we repent. God, may we turn to you. Moses, Moses desired that the people of God rejoice in God's grace and goodness in their life, that they recognize God's grace and goodness. And you know, when we steward our time as God would have us to do, we will be joyful people. We'll be satisfied people when we steward our time as God would have us do so. Moses prays for those who will come after them that they will see the hand of God as he and his generation had seen it. And uh, they had seen God do great and mighty things, hadn't they? And, uh, and they want, Moses was praying, God, uh, make it so, Lord, uh, establish the work of your hands, uh, God, so that those who come after us, uh, Lord, will know of your great work. Moses prayed for them. What? What we do with our time, how we invest it, will have a direct impact on the lives of those who follow us. What we do with our time, how we invest it, it makes a difference in the lives who follow us. Moses had seen the people of God wasting their lives in the wilderness. He had, he had watched them, that generation that had come to the Jordan and would not cross over through disobedience and through a faithlessness. He had watched them one by one falling in the wilderness and dying and wasting having wasted their lives and the opportunity of life and time that God had given them. And he was praying for something different for their children. He was praying for something different for them. And if we will invest our time, steward it wisely, we'll leave behind something for our children. We'll leave behind something for them. William Borden, you've heard of William Borden and probably heard of those three great statements that he wrote in his Bible. But William Borden was a son in the wealthy Borden family. That's an old name in our country of old money, the Bordens. He was one of the sons. And his father gave him a choice. When William Borden went to his father and said, Father, I believe the Lord's calling me into the ministry. I, I believe he would have me go to Bible college and go be a missionary. William Borden's father said, Son, you have a choice. The family business and your inheritance or nothing. And William Borden, uh, William Borden made a choice. And ultimately, God saw fit that he wound up with a fortune that he, 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 his father didn't intend for him to have it, but God gave it to him in the end, ultimately. And uh, he gave that entire fortune away to reach the lost. In reaching the lost. When he did this, when he made the decision to take all of the inheritance he had and invest it back into the work of God, I mean, he didn't just keep a nest egg. He gave it all to the work of God. He, he, he made that decision, and he opened his Bible up to that blank page at the beginning, and he wrote that date, and he wrote the words, No reserves. I'm not relying on any of this. I'm not going to trust any of this to be my means of supply and provision I'm giving it all investing it all in God's work no reserves and so William Borden gave away a fortune in seeking to reach lost souls and he became a missionary and he went to Egypt in Egypt he desired to reach the Muslim people in northern Africa with the gospel of Jesus Christ but Borden struggled greatly with the culture and with learning the language never really getting a handle on it and he became very ill. He contracted meningitis. And it kept him sick and on the door of death for, for a long time. But, but there was a day when he opened back up the Bible and under the words, no reserves, reminding him he had given away an earthly fortune, he wrote down the words, no retreats. No retreats. I'm not turning back whether it be health or discouragement from others or the language or the culture, no retreats, no reserves, no retreats. He labored on, William Borden labored on without ever really seeing the goals that he wished in the salvation of souls. Never really saw the great harvest of souls that he would have liked to have seen. But before he died, he wrote one more thing down in his Bible. As he thought back over his life, he wrote down one more statement. Below no reserves 
and no retreats. He wrote down the words, no regrets. No regrets. You know, faithful stewardship is about no regrets. No retreats and no reserves. So that when it's time for us to leave this world, we're not leaving anything on the battlefield. We've used it all. We've invested it all in the work of God and the eternal work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you today, you know, faithful stewardship, it's more than just about money. Oh, it's about money. It's about that too. But it's about more. It's about our lives. It's about the lives. Uh, and our lives consist of time. This is what our lives are all about. And we must invest it, our time, our lives, and not waste it. We must be sure that we live, that there are no regrets, that we've kept nothing back, that we, that we don't retreat no matter how difficult or how, how, how much a lack of encouragement there may be, uh, we must continue to steward our lives uh, with the wisdom of God. In 1 John chapter 2, this, this little verse of Scripture, the world passeth away, the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Is what you're investing your life in, is that going to make a difference in eternity? Don't waste it. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. Say, but Pastor, I've lived in the sorrow of wasted days in the past, and I just seem can't get beyond that, and I can't move forward positively and productively. Well, that can stop today. It can stop today. And just get, give today into the Lord's hands and, and know, know Him and recognize His place in your life, that He is life. He's your life. He's our life. He's our life in this world. He's eternal life. And He'll be what life is all about in eternity. And today, life is about living for Him and pleasing Him because He has a purpose for our lives. He has a purpose for us. And God wants to hear us. Uh, he wants to hear from us. He wants us to... Uh, to give our life to Him. Well, let's bow our heads and we're going to have a word of prayer together and then in a moment we're going to stand and we're going to sing a, an invitation song. And an invitation is the time in the service when we ask you to respond uh, to how Jesus Christ has been speaking to your heart. In services like this, services like this, <clears throat> and I look back over my life, God has done some of His greatest work in my heart by hearing the Word of God and responding to it. Just simply being obedient, saying, Lord, I agree with you about that. I believe that that is exactly, God, what your will is for my life. Now, Lord, make it so in my life. And uh, the Lord speaks to our hearts. He does his work there. And I don't know how he's speaking to you right now, but I encourage you to say yes to him. Be obedient to him. Maybe somebody came to church tonight that you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've been sincerely religious or... You've been, you, you desire to, to be in a place where God is pleased with your life, but, but there's never been a time in your life when you sit down and let someone take the Word of God and show you from the Scriptures what Jesus Christ did for you, how you can trust Him and be saved. And we want you to know today that this is what His will for your life is, that you trust Christ and be saved tonight. Know Him as your personal Savior. Maybe you came to church this evening, but... That's not true of you. We want to take time tonight to meet with you and take God's word and help you settle the greatest need in life. Be prepared for the day of death so you can begin to live and steward and invest your time in the things that will make a difference. Maybe somebody's come tonight. You'd be honest enough just to slip your hand up and just say by that, pray for me. I don't know that I've ever had someone show me from God's word how to be saved. I don't know that I'm scripturally saved. Uh, I, w I would like for you to pray for me. Uh, anyone at all, just slip your hand up and just say by that. I won't embarrass you. I just want to know how to pray for you, how to continue the invitation. Maybe somebody would say, you know, after church, Pastor, I'd like to meet with you or your wife. I'd like, to have, I'd like to have you show us from the Bible how you can trust Christ and be saved. And you'd just like to do that after the service is over. Anyone here tonight, others have done that in our church. People sitting here tonight say, by the grace of God, because that's what God laid on their heart to do. Maybe you're here today, 
and you'd say after the service, Pastor, I'd like to meet with you or Miss Angie, someone I'd feel comfortable with allowing them to share the gospel. I want to trust Christ and be saved. Anyone tonight in the service? Anyone at all? I don't know how the Lord spoke to you about His place in your life, about the purpose He's created you and saved you for, but I encourage you to talk to Him about it tonight and allow Him to do what He wants to do in your heart and life. Don't, don't allow your life to be told as a tale that, that can't be remembered. Uh, number your days and invest them wisely in the work of God, in the things of God, in the things of eternity, so that they might make a difference in the lives of others and impact eternity. I want to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you. Don't, don't, allow, don't allow days to go by in sorrow, the past, begin to live today. Begin to steward today and the day that you have and move forward in your heart and life in the Lord. However the Lord spoke to your heart, others have come and, and you may need to come. Uh, you just come and allow the Lord to do His work today <clears throat> in your heart, in your life. We're thankful for His grace and goodness. We're going to pray together. Lord, we thank you for those tonight who, Lord, uh, you've allowed to be in church. And Lord, we thank you for your word. And we just pray, God, tonight now as you're speaking to our hearts that, Lord, we'll just be obedient, we'll be attentive, we'll, we'll Lord, just respond to you as, God, you would, you would have us to respond. And, Lord, we're thankful for your grace and mercy and love and your long-suffering uh, patience with us. And, God, we just, uh, we just pray tonight that now, Lord, each and every one here, Someone, Lord, is unsaved that tonight they wouldn't leave tonight. Their heart be burdened. And, and Lord, they look to Christ tonight and trust you and be saved. And, Lord, we pray for others tonight, Lord, who, God, uh, all of us, need, we, need to, we need to steward our time. And, Lord, sometimes we can allow uh, the past and uh, things that, God, we're, we've allowed to steal away our time, uh, God, to, to hinder us and, and, to, and to keep us wandering around in the wilderness but lord uh, we pray god that it would be different beginning tonight and so lord we pray that lord uh, you'd allow uh, our hearts tonight just to be honest with you uh, lord that you'd hear from us tonight and lord we would ask you god to help us become good stewards of the life that you've given us and so lord just do your work tonight and we'll thank you for what you do in jesus name and amen we're going to stand together tonight and we're going to turn to him 282, 282 in our hymn book. And uh, if you need to respond to the Lord tonight, you do that. You come. You say yes to Him and you'll not regret it. But look, let's just sing together on the very first verse of hymn 282. Let's sing that first verse together. <clears throat> Amen. Well, it's been good to be here today, and we're going to just uh, kind of change the order of our service, and we're going to have the blessing on the refreshments right here, and then we're going to assure Miss Barbara and her family uh, are able to get right over there and get us started through the line, and, and uh, we're going to fellowship together with them and enjoy uh, this tonight, and uh, what a blessing. We're thankful for this family and what it means to this church and has for so many years. And uh, we just want to honor them, and, uh, and they're worthy of that tonight. We hope everybody will stay, and you say, well, I didn't bring anything. Well, that's all right. You just come and be a part of it. Uh, we didn't ask anybody to bring anything, and uh, we wanted to do this for Barbara and everybody tonight, just something special for them. 
and uh, so you come and enjoy that with them. Uh, if you go out the back door, don't forget to look at the new bulletin board ministry area. And on that bulletin board back here, there are some cards with all types of various ways that you can be involved in furthering God's work right here at our church. Uh, some are just labor and some time that you can invest in doing some projects here that might need to be done at daycare or at the church or on the playground or whatever it might be. And uh, other things maybe uh, have to do with servicing and maintaining buses and vans. There'll be a variety of things up there now. And uh, they'll be changing as, as needs are met and people uh, meet those needs. But check it out on your way out and see if there's maybe some way you can help in those things. And, and uh, we're thankful for God's grace. But uh, we're going to pray together and ask the blessing on the offering and, and uh, just uh, enjoy this fellowship to get our, our on the food tonight. That's a good offering, isn't it? And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we want to just look to the Lord and worship Him in prayer. Lord, thank you for meeting with us tonight. Thank you for, uh, Lord, this special night and for all the families who assembled here to, together. Uh, Lord, thank you for families, God, and Lord, what they mean to this church and Lord, uh, what this church means to our families. And so, Lord, uh, we pray to, tonight together as a church and family, you'll strengthen us. May we, God, uh, steward our time wisely and invested in the work of God, invested in the ministries of, uh, that you have here in our church. And Lord, we thank you for these families. Bless them, meet needs in their lives, provide for them and use them, Lord, to provide for your work. And uh, Lord, make, help us together to make a difference in eternity. Lord, we pray for Miss Barbara and Orman and their family, their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We just pray for all of them. You put your hand on all of their lives. And God, ultimately, uh, Lord, this family, uh, each and every one, God, uh, will serve you and live for you. And just look at the, at the faithfulness of Miss Barbara. And may that be a challenge to their lives, to, to God, just uh, to follow after her and Lord, uh, and, uh, and to look at the way, God, in which she's invested her life for a rich reward. And uh, Lord, bless her tonight and make this a special night for her and her family. And the uh, Lord, bless the food and we thank you for it. We just pray you'd strengthen us to serve you and live for you. And we ask it all in Jesus.